So we'll just kick it off by saying good afternoon and welcome. This is the third webinar in Tales from the Classroom, where we'll be exploring CoSpaces EDU. And shortly, I'm going to introduce to you our guest speaker, who are Paul Green, who is an amazing, innovative teacher. And he's used CoSpaces with secondary students. And he's going to give us all the ins and the outs of uh, what works in the classroom with CoSpaces and what didn't. Um, and before we begin, let's start with our acknowledgement to country. So I'm just going to move across here. Sorry, I'll go back one. We acknowledge the first Australians as the traditional custodians of the continent. This culture is the oldest living culture. Kath, you forgot to share computer audio. Yes, elders, past, present. Pressing pause, going in to share computer sound and pressing play, apologies. Emerging, and we respect their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship with the land. We extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today. They share the memories, traditions, and hopes of the traditional ancestors with the new generation today and in the future. We would also like to thank them for looking after this land for thousands of years. Okay. And uh, you may already, already be aware of the STEM.T4L program. It offers teachers access to kits to use with students. Uh, our guest speaker is very familiar with a number of the uh, kits that we have. We have um, and professional learning. We have uh, learning challenges, project-based learning challenges that are mapped to the New South Wales curriculum. And uh, we also promote a community of practice where teachers can learn from each other and share um, their experiences and uh, what they have created. So moving forward, um, these kits we have are available and uh, Paul, you can attest to the STEM.T4L program as you've used quite a few of these kits. Um, so all the information that you need uh, to be able to access these kits can be found on the STEM.T4L learning library. And Paul, I believe, uh, and we'll go over this soon, but you've used 3D printing, PC robotics and co the coding kit. So um, definitely very familiar with a lot of those. This is where you go to access the learning library. Uh, there is a link there, t4l.link forward slash STEM, but it can also be found on the stem.t4l learning library under your uh, stuff portal in my learning tools on the left. And you'll find there's an icon there that is for the STEM.T for our learning library. So we also uh, have, and they're probably one of my most favourite resources, uh, is pre-made learning challenges. There's also a template there, which is uh, if you are thinking of writing your own, it's a project-based learning challenge uh, based on design thinking. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to introduce to you Paul Green. So, oh, we also have Lawrence here today and he's on the chat. So if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and Lawrence will endeavour to answer those for you. Um, okay, Paul, you've been teaching for about 22 years. About that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're currently at um, Erina High School. Can you tell us a little bit about your um, background experience in technology uh, and teaching? Okay, yeah, um, uh, in all honesty, um, the, the move into to technology, specific technology teaching has been a very, very new thing for me. Uh, mostly my background has certainly been as a teacher librarian right through my teaching career. And so uh, technology has really been taught in the, in the basis of research and how to do projects and assignments. So I've taught students how to use the internet as a research tool, how to take notes, how to write bibliographies, using online resources like uh, Britannica Online and that sort of thing. Taking on a technology-based class like this was a, a really new, was a new challenge for me starting at the, um, towards the end of 2019, when my head teacher came to me and said, hey, we've got this new thing called Microbit, I want you to learn how to use it. 
And so I go, oh, okay, and and off we went from there. And that's sort of led into the Nexus um, Nexus program that we've been running here at Erina High School. So, um, this is really great for anybody who's listening that doesn't have any experience with co-spaces and is really keen to learn how to use it. Um, Paul's had no prior experience and has come into this. Um, anybody can do it. There's mm -hmm. lots of stuff out there to help you through it. Mm -hmm. Well, if we look at some of the um, creation tools that are actually, I'll just uh, just go back to sharing my screen before mm -hmm. I start talking and forget to share. <laughs> if we just quickly have a look at these creation tools that go with uh, and can be used with the CoSpaces application. Uh, the Ricoh Theta 360 camera uh, is fantastic and you can use that to upload those 360 photo uh, static photo bubbles to CoSpaces to create virtual experiences. And we've also got the Merge Cube so, Paul, I'm wondering, because this is a really good time for mm -hmm. me to come back to you and if I stop sharing and we get you to talk about this Nexus program and uh, and then we'll talk about some of the um, co-spaces samples. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so here at um, Erina High School, we've been running the Nexus program all the last year and it's designed to be a value-added class, so to speak. It doesn't exist as, a, as a, a subject on its own. Rather, it supports other key learning areas, and each term is uh, arranged about a basic theme for the KLA uh, that we're cooperative with. And the students will do one lesson a week with me on their technology stuff and another lesson a week with their normal classroom teacher. And so this year, uh, we are doing HSIE during term one and we're looking at directions, maps and then water in the world. And to go along with that, we'll be uh, using Tinkercad and 3D printing and the students will design a compass, which was what they're about to start beginning next week and we will print that out for them. And then they will have to design and um, have printed a water wheel, which we will then test by, funnily enough, running water through it and uh, seeing if it works. Uh, English will be term two. Uh, the English uh, study at the time is documentaries. So we're hoping to have, uh, We last year, we got stopped by COVID and uh, we haven't really done a lot with this, but we're hoping to get the students to make a documentary of some prescription, either through video or podcast. Um, mathematics was, is going to be term three. We look at probability. And for that, we're using microbit and the students will code a microboat program one week and then in their next lesson they will get the program back and run probability exercises with it, which they then uh, note the results to. And then, of course, the one we're talking about today, co-spaces we use with science uh, in term four and um, they're looking at uh, living things, animal classification and food chains. And so we used, um, in co-spaces, we used Merge Cube, which is one of the tools there. Uh, in this one is a case of a foam block with designs on each side, uh, and it will create a virtual reality around it when you look at it through a, a device. Well, we have a lot of those ones in the foam block, but you can also get it in a, a paper version. You can't see that very well, which you can then cut out and um, and make yourself yeah so there fantastic um so paul that's really fantastic really that uh you're in a you're in a secondary um setting and yes, you're scaffolding across and working with other faculties yes um and connecting uh curriculum content mm -hmm. to this technology which is yes. really really important mm -hmm. um so with this you were saying how you did have uh, some teachers from those faculties come in and actually be involved with uh, the Nexus program while you were doing these projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, each, um, so we work on a, a cyclic basic here, a fortnight cycle. So one, one period a fortnight, they have me just for the, as the Nexus teacher. Um, their other period of fortnight as the next program will be with their classroom teacher. And that will, it, the, 
the period will change throughout the year depending on what subject it is. And um, so what we've found is we have to have a really, really good uh, system of communication to continue to communicate with the, um, the other teachers. Early on in the, in the, the term, usually I will uh, uh, teach cooperatively with uh, the teachers as well, especially if they're not as, as uh, good with the technology as I am. For example, this morning I, I did a Tinker, Tinkercad class with the, uh, the classroom teacher. And then another one, which was just my one in the afternoon. So, yeah, my last couple of weeks have been really busy. And that's fantastic, being able to support other colleagues in building confidence with this technology to be able to interact and use this technology. Um, so you also had some interest from uh, the school community and uh, parents mm -hmm. in regards to the Nexus program and, and the use of the technology? Mm -hmm. Well, last year was a surprising success. Not that we didn't think it was going to be work or going to work, but the fact that it worked as well as it did surprised us. Uh, we were really making things uh, up as we went along and there were a couple of hiccups here and there, but mostly it was very, very smoothly. So our, our plan this year is to develop a much more rigid program. But um, uh, what has happened by term three, other people had been... Um, uh, interested in, in contacting the school from uh, during our parent information nights, we were actually drawing interest from parents out of our area who wanted to check out this Nexus program and see if it was something they wanted their children to be um, involved with. So yeah, we were it, it's worked much better than we were expecting the first year out, and and we've been gaining interest from outside as well. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wonder if, Paul, we can get you to share because you actually created some supporting uh, documents mm -hmm. through a website, uh, a Google site, in fact, that you shared with your students and those teachers. Yep. Uh, could you just share so that uh, other teachers can see how you've put this into practice uh, in teaching and learning? Sure. Oops. So we have made a Google um, Sites website for our Nexus program. And um, if you have a look at it here, each of the different terms, the different work is on uh, under these tabs. So starting with HSIE um, and our Water in the World project, uh, we have instructions under each on how to do each um each of the uh, uh, each of the uh, projects that we'll be working on. For example, this is the instructions for doing the water wheel. Um, moving back before, this is a bit difficult here. Um, under maths, we had a few of the um, projects that we started with under micro bit. So uh, to get the kids, the students going, we gave them these simple. Um, programs to work until we got onto the actual, uh, the content work, which was uh, contained in a workbook for this case so that the maths department could then go on and um, uh, mark it as part of their uh, assessment. And science, uh, of course, was co-spaces. And we started out with classifying living things here. And it started out with a quick uh, video by one of our teachers um, telling us about the classifications in this case, a short Google uh, quiz there. And then we could go on to actually making of the merge cube in this case. The first merge cube was about uh, creating animal classification and it was, it was more another way of doing the, um, uh, the classification of animals rather than just writing it out in notes. So we gave specific instructions on what they would need to do. And each part was, was um, accompanied by a, an instructional video. So each uh, video tells you how to do one part of the, the merge cube in co-spaces. Um, like that. So our second one we went on to for this was uh, cells. 
And for cells, we again did a short video and quiz. And quiz. And on to part four, making a cell merge cube. The students in this case had to choose whether they were going to make an animal cell or a plant cell. And um, they had to include five parts in the actual cell diagram that they used. And no, I noticed, Paul, we've got a few people asking about uh, and asking questions about the merge cube and what is it. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to take them through shortly and show mm -hmm. them some samples. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, we'll just cover the project. And so you were talking about the cells here, Paul. Mm -hmm. For this one in particular, the, they were to make a diagram of a cell using merge cube and co-spaces, and they had to label it with a speech bubble or a thought bubble in this case, and give us a little bit of information. Now, for this one, we actually had to make the parts of the model uh, prior to this, which we did in Tinkercad, and then loaded them up on our website for the students to download and make their merge cube with. And that's really fantastic to see how you're utilising different types of technology uh, for the students to learn and consolidate their understanding of things. That's fantastic. So our final one for co-spaces here was looking at food chains and food webs. And again, a short video and quiz. And then going on to the explanation of what we're actually going to be doing. This one was not a merge cube. This one was an actual co-space. And the idea was to show, um, uh, in this case, an interactive food chain. So create an environment and using the 3D models of animals within uh, co-spaces to uh, show the, the relationship with food chains between them. So what ate, eats what. And so, they ended up with a co-space looking something like this is what was downloaded. For this one, we actually had, uh, rather than videos, we had Google Docs that we could be opening up to run the instructions. So the principle behind um, the website itself is that the students would be able to walk, uh, work through at their own pace. And that's absolutely fantastic. And the fact that you can see very clearly uh, you've connected with other faculties. You mm -hmm. can see the content from those other faculties and how uh, you've connected digital technologies with this. So I wonder if uh, what we can do next, Paul, is move to uh, you showing some of those samples. Now, for uh, people who are watching today, we do have a deck and in that deck there is uh, QR codes where you can actually go in and explore this stuff uh, with the QR code. So I'll put that up shortly, but Paul's now going to share with you those student work samples. Okay, so this, this is our classroom and each of the, the students would log in with a class code. Um, and so, yeah, just a couple of those. First, the animal merge cube. I'm going to show you this one. You know, I know for, we go into student free play here, which is where they are. And here's one with a lion. Now, the idea behind this was the, in the Emerge Cube, they had to use a 3D model of one of the animals. They had to choose one from CoSpaces itself. They had to give it a title, obviously, and some of the points about its classification, in this case, the kingdom, class, genus, and species. They had to, whoops, I don't want to do that. I'll... I'm going to play before we try to touch it. And what he's done with this one, he's animated the line on top and made it uh, be able to walk around. You can walk, move around the uh, merge cube like that. They were supposed to have some more pictures and some sounds with them. So that was a, a basic one that one student did. Um, I'll go and show you this one. You go back into the class. This young lady deserves the ducks of co-spaces, in my opinion. Um, our class is at Erina 
I didn't mention this before. This is the next program is only run with year sevens, and our year seven groups are graded. And this class was one of the, the lower ability classes, what we refer to as um, learning ops. And her work in this has just been amazing. If I go to play here, you can see she's coded the um, the zebra to walk around. Has the other points that the other people have had, including in this case a zebra skeleton or anatomy. We asked them to put on there. And if you click on the picture, we should get a zebra sound <laughs> like that. And so, Paul, just for the viewers, um, what you're actually looking at in co-spaces mm -hmm. is the environment where they are creating this. If they look yeah. at this through uh, a digital device and hold the digital device in front of either the actual Merge Cube or the cardboard template of the Merge mm -hmm. Cube, then it looks like they're holding what you can see on the CoSpaces screen there in their hand and they can turn that around and look at it and all of those things that are moving will be uh, or making sounds and so on will be happening in the palm of your hand. In the palm um, of your hand so or on the table. Fantastic uh, tool, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll, I'll just show you this. Um, to make things move, to put sounds in, we need to code. So I'll click on code up here and it should give us our actual code here. That's block coding, the same as you use with microbit, same as you use with um, spheros and a variety of other things we use. And what she's done, she's downloaded the picture file from uh, Wikimedia. Uh, she, we gave them sounds, and again, they were on the uh, web, our website, and so they could download those and put them in there too. And uh, this was her... Um, coding for moving the zebra around the path on the top. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that was the first one. Uh, the next one we had was uh, our cell, cell design. Again, this young lady, same, same student again. Shouldn't have gone out of it. Uh, she chose to do a plant cell like so. And as I said, this is um, this is this has worked more as a diagram than anything else. But again, it looks like you hold it in the palm of your hand when you are using a digital device. As you see, she's named each of the parts with um, speech bubbles, as she was supposed to do. And if you click on each one, you will get a uh, an information panel. And again, with this one, the coding was quite extensive. So in order to give you the information panel um, for each one, she had to go in and code individually each part. Now, we did actually only expect them to do one sample of each. However, she's gone through and done every piece she's put in there, um, which was really good. As I said, this was one of our learning ops kids and most of our uh, learning ops kids really did take to using this co-spaces quite well. Okay. Paul, these are fantastic examples mm -hmm. and we are shortly going to go through a bit of a demo with everybody if you have your mm -hmm. laptops ready. But, Paul, uh, in terms of using this uh, with... Uh, and. Uh, We've looked at uh, your sample um, from the cell, uh, from the merge cube. Mm -hmm. um, you also had uh, an activity in the project where they created an actual co-space as well, didn't you? Yes, we did. Okay, if we want to have a look at that one. Um, I'll use this one. So the idea, of course, was it was meant to be a food web or a food chain. And if we wait for it to come up here, this young lady, who I think was in our um, top class in this case, has created a, a one which is based on dinosaurs. Um, so what she's done is she's picked the environment, kind of a forest environment here. She's had to put each of the parts in with um, direct from the, the, the library of models. She's then had to code the ring here for the T-Rex to chase the Triceratops and, of course, the ring to uh, make the 
the dinosaur fly around. So if we have a look in play at this one, you can see going like so. How, well, I, I don't know if had you... a safari one as well, Paul, which was really fantastic. Mm, would you like to see that one too? Yes. All yeah. right. Just Great. to give that concept. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, coding, if you look at this, uh, had to be all coded for each of the different animals to do for what they were doing. So the T-Rex running around in, a, in on the path, in this case, a round path, Triceratops, again, running on a round path, and the flying dinosaur um, had to be adjusted around path two. And that coding there, Paul, is a really great example of mm -hmm. categorising uh, each of your assets when you're coding them. So mm -hmm. um, that's a really good example with the coding there. And... Um, making it really easy to understand. So this is the Safari one. Again, it's the same student I was looking at before. Um, you can see she's uh, got basically an African savanna, which she's built and all of the different animals that are on it. And if we go into play, you can see... We need to adjust the camera a little bit, but you can see she's got the lion chasing the zebra around. Now, with a co-space, you have a spot, pot, spot where you can put the camera. So what distance you're actually going to be looking at it for, and she's put it in the middle of this path. And so we can scroll around to see what's going on. I love these lions sitting up here on the, the rock. That's awesome. Again, some fairly... Good code on that one. You had to code the zebra, the young zebra, the lion. She's coded a snake here, which runs around a path too, but I haven't found it in there yet. So <laughs> I'm not quite sure where it is. Um, but again, the young zebra and the lion chasing them. So, yeah, the students themselves had done really, really well at this. So if we have a look at the um, workflow content and uh, I'll just share this screen with you very briefly mm -hmm. and move forward. Um, and then, Paul, what we might do is get into that demo with the teachers. Uh, so let me move forward here. Oh, you can see there the questions about the Merge Cube. There's actually a video here and uh, that person is actually holding a Merge Cube and they're looking at it through a digital device from this side. And you can see how uh, as they turn it around, they see different parts of the Merge Cube. So um, being able to inspect objects really closely uh, and you can look at um, the human body, you can look at, as you can see, uh, you could do landmarks um, and you can see all sorts of different um concepts here uh, that are covered in the curriculum uh, across different stages where you could use the merge cube so that's just an example of um, using the merge, merge cube so um, these are the QR codes and I will share this uh, on the social media uh, as a pdf under the live recording and if we have a look at the virtual, virtual, virtual reality rainbow, this is really fantastic uh, just to understand what has actually happened there uh, with Paul's students. And they've actually, there's different levels of uh, creating those virtual environments. And so you can see if you look at the blue and purple row, and I'll just uh, skip ahead here, when we're using co-spaces, um, we're creating that interactive content. Oh. And most importantly, to actually access a license for this, because if you use CoSpaces uh, as it is right now, it won't be the pro version. But remembering through stem.t4l, you can actually get your license uh, by going to our learning library. Remember, that's in the My Learning Tools on our portal, and you'll find the stem.t4l learning library. And when you go to uh, our learning library, you'll see tabs up the top and you'll see the kits you click on that and you go to coding kit and as you scroll down there'll be uh, two pink uh, icons like buttons and you press on the one that says co spaces and you can see there's a very very short uh, form to fill out to get those co spaces for your school to use for the term so um, coming back to that content workflow. Uh, CoSpaces actually fits on that virtual reality rainbow in a couple of spaces, but Paul's students were actually um, using 
with the merge cubes, the blue and purple strip there, where they actually had the uh, 360 environments and they were adding those um, imaginary uh, characters where they actually had uh, interaction and movement. So you can see there's different levels of working with virtual reality. And Paul, if we go to that demonstration, now this will be the fun stuff. I'm gonna stop sharing that screen. And if you have your computer available and I'm going to start sharing uh, this screen. And I know that Paul's got his computer ready to go as well. And I'm actually going to go over here to CoSpaces. Now, you know, when you log on and you get to CoSpaces for today, you might not have that pro account and it might take uh, 24 hours for those licenses to come through. Uh, but remember, it only takes two minutes uh, on, of filling in that form. And when you actually, uh, and are you seeing my screen, Paul, my CoSpaces screen? Thumbs up? No. Oh, here I am talking away and you haven't got it. So let me go to that page. Thank you. Uh, let's do screen two. Share. How's that now? Can you see my CoSpaces screen? Yes. Great. Same process so once you've logged on to CoSpaces, you have the option to enter as a teacher or enter as a student. And uh, once you're on, there are four tabs that run CoSpaces and they're down the left-hand side of the screen. So what we have at the top is a gallery and this is where people will actually share uh, environments that they've created and sometimes you can actually remix these so they're a great way to start uh, a template if you're not sure where to begin and then what we have in the second tab is classes and you saw that Paul had classes set up with his students and that those students had joined the class now the benefit of this is that Paul could see live while this was happening in his classroom and the students were busy he could see live from his computer by clicking on one of the students and seeing exactly where they were up to and what they were doing. And the third tab, what we have here on the left is CoSpaces. And this is uh, the CoSpaces that you create. And so then what we have uh, underneath is where we can actually archive those CoSpaces. So for today, we thought it would be really cool. Paul and I uh, decided we would create a class and get you to join it. So you can see as a teacher, you can go into create class and we're going to call this uh, demonstration. And I'm going to say create and we get a code. So when you go to uh, go on to CoSpaces, if you've logged in um, and you go to classes, uh, there will be an option on the top right to join class and you can actually um, on the top of the screen and you can actually put this code in and you can come up in our class but while I'll put this code back up in a moment or perhaps I could get uh, Lawrence to put that in the chat the class code to join mqd35 and while that's happening I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create an assignment for you so in this assignment uh, we're going to say that we want you to use uh, a 3d environment and that uh, you're going to uh, create, you're going to retell a children's story. And I'm going to, I've already typed a bit of a spiel there. I'll just copy that and place this in here. This is a description of your task. So your task is to recreate your interpretation of the well-known children's story, The Three Little Pigs. And you can do this by recreating scenes as a visual rep represent representation of three story parts. So you can use your co-space environment to bring each part of your story to life. Now I have the option as a teacher when we create an assignment to actually choose whether the assignment is going to go to every single student or whether they're whether going they're to work in groups. groups. But I'm going to click on individual now we've created this we've already got uh, some people in here which is fantastic uh, we also had that option in classes where I could add another teacher so I'll just go up here and show you there's my demonstration lesson if I open this lesson you can see the option up here to add more students or to add teachers I can click on students and I can see who's there and if I go into Trisha's we can see that here's uh, 
the screen. So we'll come back to that later and have a look and see how everybody is going. Um, but what I'm going to do now, if I can get you to follow along and join in, and Paul's going to um, talk about things that worked in the classroom and uh, that as well as we go and perhaps give us some tips and tricks, uh, I'm going to go in and actually create a co-space to uh, sort of give you an idea on how to uh, do this yourself. So I'm going to start from an empty scene. And here we have uh, co-spaces. The first thing I might do if we're creating a story for the three little pigs is change my environment. So I'm going to, down on the bottom, uh, there's a tab with three icons and one's environment. I'm going to click on that, go to edit. And when I go to edit, I'm actually going to scroll through these. There are some ones that you can choose from yourself or uh, you can actually upload, if you have those 360 cameras, upload actual photo, uh, 360 photos, which are fantastic. So. Uh, for now, I'm going to uh, create one with a wood scene. So here we go. I have my wood scene. So now I've got, uh, you can see as I spin around, you can see my camera sitting in the middle there and it starts off positioned this way, but I can put my mouse on the screen, hold down the mouse and spin this around so that I can actually see my 360 environment. So now if I'm going to create a story, now I might create different parts to my story. I might have a different scene to retell three of those parts. And if you look on the left, there's a menu bar with two icons. And I'm going to click on the little photo. And you can see I've got one scene here. I can name those scenes. I can change that from scene one. I could give it a name, but for today, I'm going to leave it as scene one. As I go, when I've completed this scene, I can click on new scene and I'll get a collection of scenes here uh, for me to work through. So I'll just click so you can see I now have scene one and scene two. I'm going to go up to scene one because that's the space we're working in right now. Okay, um, so you can see I can also name my co-space. So I might go up here and put the three little pigs. Okay, so, and that will actually change up the top in the menu bar. You can see the title, The Three Little Pigs, and I'm on scene one. So um, I'm going to go in and Paul, we're going to add assets. Did you want to sort of talk through as I uh, do this, you do yours about adding assets? Adding assets. Um, yeah, so you, you've got a library, basically. <laughs> um, which you can, uh, lots of different things. Kids love to play with the housing ones. They love to build houses in here. If you let them go, that's almost exactly where they go and run with. Um, but certainly the, uh, the animals, you can, there's a range of them. And I suppose for the purposes of um, uh, using the three little pigs, you will want to use the pig. Basically, it works to just click and drag it into your uh, environment. You can then adjust uh, sizes with those little four um, points there above. You can adjust the size by, again, clicking and dragging. Everything works on clicking and dragging. Um, I've found it really important. I, I don't know what your situation might be, but here at Erina, we use a lot of, um, most of the computers we use are laptops. We have laptops in the library. We have laptops in the uh, next room we have laptops in some of the classrooms so sometimes kids need a little bit of a lesson on how to use the touchpad instead of a mouse if you can get mouses they work much more easily but I always tell them to use two fingers the your left finger to click your left button and your right finger to use your um uh, your cursor on the on the screen there and adjust your sizes um Absolutely. So there's some great uh, things, isn't there, Paul? And mm -hmm. with this one, if I'm going to be creating my scene, I have a, a pig and I'm going to add a house. Now, when I go up here to housing and I actually type uh, house and you could even try to be specific, but the, this is the only selection of houses that they have on the media library within the application. But one of the really cool parts that you can do is you can go to upload. Now, you heard Paul talking about how they uploaded sounds with the Merge Cube and, uh, and they uploaded some of the images and things that they didn't have uh, from the web. 
Well, this is where you can go and you can notice when you click on upload, it's got images, videos, sound, all files and 3D models. So if I go over to those 3D models and I uh, click here for a web search and my first little pig's going build a straw house. So I'm going to type straw house and there's a couple of options here. I'm going to take a straw house and put it here. This is going to be my first scene. Now you notice at the moment when I've put it in there, it's been put in and it's below uh, the actual floor of what we're working on. So I'm actually going to take that toggle and drag it up. That'll do. And we have the option. I've got the uh, axis, uh, those lines that are around it for X, Y, Z, and I can manipulate uh, what part of it you'll see by turning it around um, to make it um, look good when they're watching co-spaces. So now I have my first little pig who has a house of straw. So Paul, uh, in terms of the, so you can see they've got sound videos and images. Mm -hmm. um, now you are working with merge cubes and uh, there's a different part instead of opening up 360 environment uh, mm -hmm. they had to actually go in to create with a merge cube when you were using um co-spaces was there any tips and tricks that you had for it to work effectively in a classroom what did work and what really didn't um, the first thing the, the big thing i was just found didn't work as as we went right through um the, the whole term by the time the students got to the uh um, actually doing this co-space, we were starting to run out of time, so time management's important one. Um, and uh, I think some students were, were, were maybe becoming a little bit bored. So they were doing a lot of playing with the environments and the things and building environments, but they had very, very little to do with what we were actually doing. So, yeah, you've got to keep up with... Um, with, with checking the kids or assessing the kids that they're actually keeping to the, the outcome. That was the first thing I, I reminded. Merge cubes themselves, there, there was nothing really that didn't work. They really, really, really enjoyed them and they really, really worked on them uh, really very hard. Um, one of the, the points we did have find, one of the points I did find they had trouble with was when they started to download the models in order to build their diagram, they had a lot of trouble putting it on top of the merge cube. So we had to do a lot of time looking with, at, you've got it right here with the, the three arrows, the green, the red, and the blue arrow. That is for um, moving something around the space. And um, so it left... Uh, left and right, backwards and forwards to the back of the plane and to the front of the plane. And then, of course, the blue one for up and down. So we did have to spend a lot of time explaining this point over and over. Um, and what about with the coding, Paul, in the classroom situation? So mm -hmm. here, um, while I'm going through and uh, coding, can you explain? Uh, so I'll just point out to you, you have the option uh, of script coding. So this does allow you for uh, that movement through the curriculum uh, when you're getting through to those other stages in secondary, um, but a great place when they're just uh, getting the concepts of coding is Coblox and that visual coding, that uh, drag and drop. So, um, Paul, uh, what were some of the things that you found with coding that helped uh, those students with learning how to code? Uh, good instructions. Right up from the very beginning, our, um, we had the uh, instructions for the coding that they needed to do printed out, uh, or sorry, not necessarily printed out, but on our website. So it would tell them exactly uh, which space to take uh, or which, which block to take and from what section. Um, as you notice that um, Kath has up here now, uh, there's a lot of different sections, transform actions, events, and so on. Um, if you just told the student to um, oh, find when an item is clicked, they had no, uh, they had uh, a lot of trouble just finding that. You had to actually point out that it uh, comes from the events block. And what Kath has to do now, she's actually got to turn code blocks on on her object um, from the, the code point there. Otherwise, it won't come up as an item for her to move. 
Mm-hmm. So now the pig's there. Uh, a lot of the students did lead a lot of one-on-one help with this one. So certainly when we got into the Merge Cube, we, we needed quite a bit of coding with the cell um, diagram, we'll call it. Uh, that one ended up taking, we were expecting it to take two lessons. It took closer to four, uh, most because the, kid, the kids needed a lot of one-on-one explanation of how to, to do the coding with the blocks. Fantastic. So you can see now we've got some code here for the pig Mm -hmm. and we've got when play is clicked, uh, when pig is clicked, so I can press play, but the pig's not going to do anything straight away until I click it. So I've got my if statement there and then set animation of pig to walk. So the actual uh, pig will look like its legs are moving, but it would be moving in the one spot. It'd be like walking in the, walking on the spot. And then my next one is actually to transform the pig and get him to move across the plane. So now I've got move pig one meter forward in one second, I find. Uh, And how did you go with this, Paul, that I usually slow this down a little bit and have this going uh, like in maybe, you know, a greater space of time, maybe five seconds. uh, And that way then it's not really fast and happens without you noticing. Yeah. And one of the things you wanted to do uh, with our, our food chain um, food chain co-spaces, you had to have your predator moving faster than your prey, otherwise they would never catch them. So it, we had to adjust the speeds in that way. Okay, so now what we've got is a co-space. We have the three little pigs. We've got a different scene for different parts of the story. We've got uh, assets that we've dropped in. We've uh, shown you how to right click on those if you have a mouse and that brings up the uh, option to do all of these things. Uh, You can code, you can use physics, you can change the material. I could make my pig uh, be a different color. So let's say I want him to be uh, blue and I say, okay. And so now you'll see (laughs) that my pig uh, is very unusual, very unique. So you can individualize everything that you do in this. So, Paul, one of the really fantastic things with this also is when they go to share and we click on the share box up here, uh, this co-space isn't shared. So if I say share, I have the option for uh, listing it, uh, sharing it unlisted, Mm -hmm. which means it doesn't go to the gallery and it's only people that I share the code with that can view it or we can publish to the gallery and that means anybody can access that. So um, we can go through and make those options when we're sharing. Um, when you share, then it gives you three options after the you've decided to share it. It will give you a QR code. It will give you a website, a web address, and it will give you a code, a share code that the um, students can put in on CoSpaces to look at what you've done or what other people have done. And I was just thinking while you said that, Paul, that we have a slide that we can show them those options that you're talking about, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So um, there we go. Did you want to talk through that, Paul? Um, Well, yeah, (laughs) I don't know. There's a lot to talk about. When you click on share, uh, it will give you uh, these three options. So if you want the students, one of the ones I did use a few times was that if um, you had students uh, want to show them in class, uh, we use the share code, which you can put in um, on the, uh, the, the CoSpaces web page. And, of course, QR code, QR code uses if you have a digital device that will read QR codes. You can scan it with your phone or an iPad or a tablet, what have you, or you can just, you'll see on the left of the share link, um, it will also give you a copy option, so you can copy and paste that stra- into a document for the students or anyone else to look at, or they f- for you. Now, Paul, uh, what- I loved when you were talking about your students, and when they had finished, you actually uh, encouraged them to go home and share with the um- with their parents, yeah, yes. and guardians, and yeah, we gave every. Every student who wanted one, we gave them a copy of the paper merge queue for them to build and take home for to, to show their parents. Fantastic. So, yeah. 
Um, and you can see there that little uh, image of the virtual reality goggles. Um, if you wanted to use the uh, handheld virtual reality to view this, you uh, can scan the code or put the code in on the code spaces on the device. And, uh, and then you press a little symbol that shows you this image and then you can look at it through the headset which actually makes you feel like you're in the environment that you've created so that's really rewarding for the students to see what they've created like that isn't it yeah it is it's, it's really good um we do we do have some virtual reality headsets um here at the school and uh it's not something we've really tried yet to to, to get the kid to develop the virtual reality spaces on coast spaces yet but it's something we can definitely look at um, as I've said a few times, I really am feel like I'm only an hour in front of the students a lot of the time. So I think with co-spaces in general, there, there's a uh, co-spaces in particular rather, not in general, there's a lot more you can do with it that I haven't really worked out yet. So, so Paul, did you have any other tips and tricks that you wanted to share uh, about the logistics of this in the classroom? Did you... Uh, assign the projects individually or in group work? Uh, no, we didn't do either. Basically, um, yeah, this is this is an interesting one. Essentially, what we did was was on our uh, website the instructions on how to do it. And we just let them do it in free play. Um, assignments probably something we can use uh, this year round because it will give us a bit more, uh, a bit better communication, I think, and a bit more. Um, uh, it will explain on, the, on there what the students need to do uh, without them having to flip backwards and forwards. I think certainly this year setting assignments would be something we'll be using instead of just allowing them to, to use free play. Um, certainly at the beginning, I, we've been finding that at the beginning of these, whether it be co-spaces or whether it be Tinkercad or whether it be the, the micro bit, giving the kids time to just play with it at the beginning is, is a way that really, really uh, helps with their engagement. And, you know, I, I've been using the term a lot uh, over last term and early this term here is, yeah, yeah, just go in there, go nuts, build anything. And they're coming up with these crazy, crazy things and they're loving it. And, and it that's fantastic a, too, Paul. Mm. And in project-based learning, that's uh, you mm. usually start with uh, introducing the technology and that's mm. where the students would have that time to explore and go nuts. Mm. So that's mm. really fantastic. Paul, in the um, classroom, and uh, I hope uh, Trish doesn't mind, <laughs> but in the classroom, if we have a look here, you can see um, that we've got, Paul's got one where he's set up and I can have a look and see his co-space. He's got his three little pigs in the scene here. Um, so he's already started that. He's changed his environment. Mm -hmm. And if I go back in Trish's, we can see that Trish has a picture of a straw hut, which is great, and her three little pig, and she's put a tree in. <laughs> um, so if Trish, if this was a student, and they wanted to uh, do more, but they weren't sure how. So this is where um, Paul, I assume you would send them to those tutorials. Otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. if you were sitting working with a student, um, you'd go through and show them how in the environment you can change it and edit your background. And you can also, when uh, Trish has uploaded her straw house, uh, she's had images highlighted, which is why she's got a picture of the straw hut instead of a, um, a 3D image. Uh, and if you wanted that 3D model, Straw Hut, you'd click on this one first before you do your search. But um, that's absolutely fantastic. So uh, coming back to this, I wonder, Lawrence, are there any questions in the chat that anybody had for Paul? I might open that chat and have a bit of a look. Yeah, doesn't look like much at the moment. Okay. Yeah, now this is fantastic. So if I go back to sharing my screen for a moment and I stop doing that co-spaces, I'd just like to show you some images of uploading your own 360 uh, static photo bubbles. So if I go into share, 
a screen and I go to the deck, go to screen three and share. And just before we finish, mindful of time, and I'll skip across. Uh, here you can see this is uh, 360 static photo bubbles that has been uploaded to the CoSpace. Uh, and then you can add those uh, animated characters and things. So um, that's definitely uh, a fantastic, fantastic option for that virtual experience. Um, and you can see that there are a number of uh, menus here, a uh, number of scenes in the menu here. Um, this is also just a bit of a guide. So this is on the deck that you'll have. Uh, and if there's anything that we've missed, don't forget uh, to have a look on the STEM.T for our learning library. There are how-to videos and some uh, recorded sessions from different uh, times with uh, using the applications in the coding kit. And uh, I might also say that if you have any uh, questions or you need support when you have a kit from us, uh, the best and sometimes the quickest way to get a response is to go to the stem.tfrl Facebook page and the stem.tfrl Yammer page. And if you go onto there, uh, you'll get a response very, very quickly. And don't forget too, there are also stem.t for our leaders as well that can help you, but definitely go to that learning library in my learning tools on the staff portal. Uh, what I might do is just quickly flick back to the very first page, Paul, because I had uh, our contact details on there. If uh, anybody wanted to uh, reach out and make contact because Paul, it's I'm so impressed with um, the way that you've uh, dived into using technology uh, and showing um, that innovation and actually giving students the opportunity to use that technology in a really uh, purposeful way. And so um, Paul's actually used micro bits. Uh, he's used the uh, 3D printing and uh, the applications, the software with that. And he's also been uh, working with co-spaces uh, with secondary. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask him about those, Paul said he'd be happy for you to email him and also feel free to uh, email me. So um, we're getting very close. Is there anything else, Paul, that you would like to add about co-spaces? Not specifically about co-spaces, but I just want to give a big shout out here to... Um this this has the nexus program itself certainly hasn't just been me there's been huge effort put in by a, a couple of other of our teachers here in particular uh grant ward who is our head teacher of administration and community coordinator and um uh andrew Manwaring, uh who's an hsie teacher and the, the the coordinator of the nexus program and a lot of the work you saw on the website uh, has come from them and a lot of the the develop the development of the actual lessons has come from them. So, you know, I just wanted to make it realise that this is a group effort. And, Hi, Paul. Yeah, and it's really I, did, I did have a question from the Facebook uh, live stream. Somebody on Facebook was asking if the, the websites that were developed, Paul, are they accessible to other schools to have a look at? Uh, I think we've got a private for the time being. Um, yep. I, I see. Sorry, I take that back we've made it public for the next 24 hours if you want to get in there and have a bit of a look and i, I just take a moment i can probably put that into the chat box for you to go and have a look at it uh, we'll need to get even as a, um, a point of inspiration mm -hmm. for teachers to also have a look at that model where you've essentially established a blended learning model between students accessing digital content mm -hmm. at their pace at their time and i guess that's what teachers are interested in yeah is seeing that blended learning approach thank you and i really do uh, love the way that you have worked with other faculties and that collaborative effort that's been put in mm -hmm. and the only way that uh, technology is successfully integrated is by working with uh, colleagues to actually make it uh, a real fantastic uh, learning experience for students. So uh, well done, Paul. And thank you so much for joining us today um, and coming on and sharing what you have done. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Lawrence, I'll, uh, I'll stop recording. And thank you, everybody else, for joining in with us today.